Okay, next up, Jeff Courtley is here. Uh, Jeff is the Vice President of Product Management at Alcatel Lucent. Jeff, welcome. Hi. Good Alcatel to see you again. Yep. Uh, first okay. time Cube yep. person, so uh, good to have you on. So um, a little different perspective here. You know, we've been talking to a lot of people from HP. We're talking to a lot of you know industry analysts and, 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 and folks. Um, with that independent perspective, you're coming at it from yet another independent perspective. You're a, an OEM customer Correct. of HP and uh, of Gen 8 as well, right? Correct. Good. So, uh, well, anyway, welcome to theCUBE. Um, why don't we start by talking, please get close to the mic uh, so everybody can hear you. Let's talk about your business, uh, just so people understand you know, the framework and the context. So you um, sell, obviously, to, to telecom companies, but talk a little bit about your business. Sure. Um, so we're in a category of a network equipment provider, but basically we manufacture, develop uh, uh, all the communications infrastructure that a service provider, be it a cable company, a wireless network operator, a fixed line uh, data operator, and even um, you know uh, large enterprises, et cetera. So all the uh, equipment that they need to uh, build, operate, and, and manage a network. So what are the what are the big drivers in your business? What are customers telling you? What, where's the big pressure points? Well, obviously data, right? So the consumption of data. We've been talking about that all day. Yeah, yeah, so like um, uh, video and and uh, you know just the the whole uh, smartphone phenomenon, et cetera. So you know increasing the speed of uh, mobile access and convergence across different uh, devices. Uh, those are real real big drivers. Mm -hmm. So we heard a lot about it. I mean, obviously, in, t in the telecom business, the service providers are really evaluating the cloud in a big way and other new technologies. With big data analytics, this seems to be some discussion like, hey, you know, over the top can be monetized, you know, applications and et cetera. So, you know, is this a good thing? I mean, you got really fast compute. Can you talk about how this is an, an, uh, vectoring into your business model? Sure, so I think there's, there's two things there. Like I said, it's not, you know, that over the top and the traditional network operators are mutually exclusive. That uh, what we're seeing is there's a lot of value in what the operators can provide in terms of uh, putting things on their on the, the customer's bill, validating their identity and and preferences, et cetera. So you can do mashups between an over-the-top application and a, a traditional communication application and create a lot of new services. Um, being able to federate that data between uh, a cloud uh, 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 operator and a more traditional you know, network data center uh, uh, environment is going to Im be important. So I think what you're going to see is a lot of hybrid uh, uh, deployment topologies or configurations where some of an application is going to exist in the cloud, some of it's going to be, you know, more uh, 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 traditional infrastructure and you're going to need to be able to manage across those uh, disparate environments. Because that affects your SLA environment. Also, you need to have really good SLAs and performance to meet that, right? So SLA really uh, constitutes a number of different attributes, right? So there's basically you know zero downtime, right? So you know these are mission critical applications, and you know if there's an outage, a lot of times it makes the Wall Street Journal. So you know uh, forget DevOps then. Yeah, it, 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 it affects people's jobs, right? So, uh, so they take this seriously. So so it's not a. a but then there's also SLAs related to yeah. you know how quickly we respond and restore. You know, when there is is a problem, so you know, it's a combination of you know leveraging the technology to create a robust design, but then also the whole life cycle support and you know a lot of things that are incorporated in the, the whole uh, Gen 8 uh, uh, philosophy in terms of, of um, you know those intelligent architecture and proactive maintenance monitoring, etc. So there's the catastrophic uh, aspect. Right of an unplanned outage, right. um, which we kind of all can understand that that's a disaster recovery scenario, and you know clearly the more automation, the less human interaction you can you can you can inject into the system, the better off you're going to be. Um, what about planned downtime? Um, sure. you, you probably your customers probably spend a lot of time planning windows where they have to do updates and patches and you know make new code fixes or whatever it is. How? Do you see that changing as a result of this announcement, or do you see it changing? Well, I'd say two things. It is a, a, a big challenge because you've got applications that are uh, distributed across the entire network, so when you're trying to do an upgrade and bring new functionality out to the marketplace, you want to do that as quickly as possible. And to the extent that it's, it's very complex, 
it takes a lot of maintenance windows, which which uh, delongates the time because you only have you know so many slots in, uh, to, to do the work. So with um, a lot of the uh, automation and simplification of configuration management and auto discovery, et cetera, you eliminate a lot of that startup uh, uh, steps, th those startup steps, so that you know we can then leverage that and shrink the interval and therefore reduce the number of maintenance windows we need to uh, to do a software update. How do you how do you sell to your end customers? Do you go in? Do they make a business case? Are you quantifying things? Is it a, or is it a different type of sell? Oh, no, abs absolutely. I mean, obviously, we would like to differentiate on you know the the capabilities that we're offering, but you know the operator is really doing a business case in terms of how much revenue are they going to generate based upon the capabilities of the technology that we're offering to them. So it really becomes a total cost of ownership, and you know the the uh, uh, compute platform and the the Gen Eight uh, uh, infrastructure is a part of our overall system, and so. You know, when we can show faster time to revenue, lower cost, the total cost of ownership, uh, simplification in terms of manageability, et cetera, those are all element. And, and even, you know, another thing that's, that's much more prevalent in the RFPs we respond to now is uh, uh, energy consumption. You know, real estate and energy are, are you know, bigger factors than, than they have ever been. And so, uh, you know, there's usually uh, specific requirements. So the fact that we're getting the benefits from Gen 8 is, uh, very helpful there. Explicitly calling those out yeah. in, in business cases. So you're updating your your, your, your TCO calculators and all that good stuff? Or oh, constantly. You know, constantly. <laughs> because, you know, the technology is always moving and, and, you know, we're trying to be, you know, what, part of the reason why we're an early adopter of the Gen 8 uh, platform is to, to be ahead of our competition in terms of bringing those capabilities to market. Can you talk about the um, innovation around the energy? Because, you know, space, power, and cooling um, is a real sweet spot for HP. I've interviewed some of their HP Labs guys a couple years ago and and uh, we talked about the notion of a data center operating system making things more, uh, I don't want to say network management, but like very much aware with sensor technology and big data analytic cut type functionality. Um, but relative to the power and cooling and the auto discovery like features that they talk about, thermal, et cetera, how is that going to affect you guys? Can you talk about that and, and how would you rate that, that impact to your business? Oh sure, I mean, because of the scale of our systems, you know, I mean, we could have a system that's, that's uh, supporting you know, a network the size of AT&T, Verizon, so you're talking, you know, 50, 80, 100 million subscribers, right? So we're not talking about a single server or a single rack. We're talking multiple racks of, of, of equipment. So you can get a lot of variation in terms of the thermal properties or, uh, you know, um, uh, CPU utilization uh, across that because you know you're, the way you're partitioning the application, especially if you're doing multi-tenant uh, uh, instances, etc. So the more visibility that you have about the perform real-time performance of the application, the better you can tune that uh, dynamically, right? And again, yeah. you know, reduce the amount of uh, server uh, um, machines that are required to run of system to support that. So you like, you like these features, what they're talking about here? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And you talked, we, when we met, you talked about uh, applications in your industry moving from the central office to the data center. Yeah. So talk a little bit more, more about what that means. So, you know, it used to be um, not too many years ago that there was a strong demarcation between systems that ran in the network and then systems that were like the business systems that ran in the in the CIO domain the data center etc you know more and more you talk about over the top services right so more and more you've got applications that are looking to dip in and get real time information out of the network like a user's presence or how they're connected to the network etc but those systems are coming from you know outside the network etc so um, so there's there's very much a blurring in terms of some of our, our, our systems are deployed in a central office type of environment, some of them are deployed in, in an IT environment. So the flexibility we get of you know being able to, to deploy the same software on either a server architecture, a blade architecture, DC power, AC power, et cetera, we've got all those, uh, uh, those types out, out in the marketplace. Excellent. All right, Jeff Courtley, thanks very much for spending some time with us and sharing your uh, unique industry's perspective. And, uh, and oh, uh, so Jen 8, you, you 
you've got Gen 8 in-house, obviously, right? We do. You've kicked the tires a little bit? or Yeah, so our developers have been uh, uh, doing some benchmarking and and, uh, migrating some of our existing applications that run on previous versions of the HP uh, ProLiant line onto the Gen 8, so uh, we'll be bringing those to market uh, pretty soon. Excellent. All right, right. well, thanks thanks for coming on. My pleasure. Good to see you. Okay, all right, take care. Thanks for coming on theCUBE.